What's up, everyone? I'm James Young with jamesyoungphotography.com, and this is Teach Me How to Lightroom. Today, we're getting grungy. We're going over how to edit urban exploration. Now, check it out. We're going to get really, really gritty, real moody with this edit. It's going to look like something out of The Walking Dead. Check it out. This is the raw file that we're starting with, and bam, this is where we're taking it. Now, don't forget the raw file is in the link in the description down below, so you can download that, follow along. Maybe you think the edit should go in a totally different direction. I'd love to see what you got. Post it on social media. Tag me in it. All my information is down there as well. But let's get right into the video. Just a couple of things when I'm starting off with this. The very first thing I want to do, this is specific to the lens I'm using. The lens I used here is the Canon 17 to 40 F4L. And I know that that lens has quite a bit of barrel distortion. So under lens correction, I'm just going to hit that with the enable profile corrections and bam, takes care of a lot of the vignette that's going on. And it also fixes the distortion caused from that lens. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop this in just a little bit as well as make sure my horizon line is straight. Shooting at 17 millimeters is by no means an easy thing to do. So try your best and then crop and post if you have to. Sweet. I was pretty close to being straight. Now I just want to crop this in just a little bit. Maybe about right there. That'll look good. So here's what our composition is going to look like. So let's get right into the edit here. Now with urban exploration, what you really want is high contrast, a little bit desaturated look. So the first thing we're going to do at the tone curve where it says point curve here and linear, this is a drop down list. Let's go with strong contrast. That's going to immediately bring out a lot of detail there. And we'll come back to the tone curve towards the end. Now at the top here of our tones, the exposure, I want to add about a third a stop of light here. So about plus 0.3. And then with our contrast, everything we're doing here is all about the contrast. So let's add about 55 here on the contrast. With our highlights, because we have the sunlight coming down through these, these light rays here, we're going to cut the highlights down substantially. We're gonna go about minus 80 on that. There we go. You can see it brings back a lot of the detail. Go from there to there. Awesome, looks good. With our shadows, we wanna open these up quite a bit. You can see all this stuff here is just almost completely black, no detail. So we're gonna open those all the way up to plus 100. Bam, let's go. Now with our whites, we do wanna bring back some of the whites. So let's do about plus 20. And then with the blacks, we want to put down the contrast here, about minus 30. Fantastic. Now, as we get to the presence here, this clarity slider, this is going to make a huge difference in the way that this looks. Because we're going for that grungy look, we're going for that urban exploration look. We want it to be gritty and just, just kind of gross almost. Let's really bring this out with the clarity. We're going to go about plus 90. There we go. Awesome. That brought out so much detail. You can see all that, all the edges here, the broken glass, all the, all the trash here. It's so much more detail. Check this out. That's where we've started and that's already where we've brought it. Now, a lot of these colors here are pretty oversaturated for my taste. So with the vibrance, we're going to cut that down to about minus 20. There we go. And that's going to take down most of the cooler areas, most of your blues and things like that. It also does bleed into the, to the warmer tones a little bit, but that's where we're actually going to increase the saturation a little bit is in the saturation. We're going to go about plus 15. Now stick with me. I know this is a little bit oversaturated. Now with this scene, I do want to adjust the color temperature a little bit. So where we're at 5,600 now, that's where the camera read the white balance to be. Let's cut that down to about 4,600. So there, as you can see, it's really starting to come together. So let's come down to our HSL and I want to focus on the saturation here. 
So I want to do some more to cut down the, the cooler tones here. So we'll start with our aqua and we'll do about minus 30. With our blues, we'll do about minus 47 there. Purples will come back down to about minus 36 and then magentas about minus 20. And you can see here, we did a little bit of a curve here. The reason why we did that, we don't want any dramatic clipping. We don't want the appearance of selective coloring. We just want to cut down the cooler tone just a little bit. Now let's bring out some really awesome color grading into this with split tones. With our highlights, we want to bring in some warmer tones into the highlights. So I'm going to scroll my hue to about 60 and we'll bring that out with the saturation slider here to about 30. Awesome. And then with the shadows, let's go to the cooler area around 240 or so. Yeah, 240 right there. And then we'll bring that out as well with the saturation slider here to about 20. Great. Now this balance slider here, this is going to determine which side gets a little bit more treatment of the split toning versus the other. And what we're gonna do here is slide it to the right so that the highlights get affected more than the shadows. So we're gonna go to about plus 25. Again, this is so that the highlights receive more of that split toning treatment than the shadows do. So let's turn off the split toning to see what it looked like before and then after. You can see it really brought out that dilapidated look. So that's awesome. I really like the way that looks. Let's add a little bit more contrast using this down here. Let's go to the dehaze. It's all the way at the bottom under effects. And let's add about 20. Oh wow, that made a huge difference. Just that one slider, look at that. Let's turn it off, turn it back on. Huge difference, I love that. Now the last thing to really round out this image, let's add a small vignette, nothing extreme. Let's do minus five on the vignette. Now with the midpoint, if you hold down alt or option, depending on your platform, and you click and hold, this is gonna give you kind of a mask of where the vignette is affecting. So as I slide it to the right, you can see it affects less. And as I slide it to the left, you can see it affects more. So we're gonna do the midpoint at zero so that it has a much larger effect. And then with our feather, this just gradiates the effect. So as you can see, if I move it to the left, you can see you get a really hard line. That's something we typically wanna avoid. So as we slide it to the right, the effect gets more and more gradiated. So now let's take a look before and after with the effects. This is of course includes the dehaze. Let's turn that off. Turn it back on. Now that is an awesome effect. You can go ahead and add grain if you want. I'm not a big fan of degrading the quality of my images, but if you like to do that, then go for it. But you can see, I've already shot this at ISO 1600. I already added some light and up the shadows really substantially. So you can see here, if we zoom in one to one, there's quite a bit of signal noise already so I don't have any reason to add and degrade the quality of this work now the very last thing we can take a look at as far as the look of this image is giving it a matte finish and mute the blacks at the very end this is a pretty crunchy pretty punchy edit and that looks great but I think the last thing to really set it off to give it that urban exploration look is to give it a matte finish so I'm gonna take the node second from the left double click to remove it. Then I'm gonna take the node all the way to the left and raise it up and to the right a little bit. Awesome. And that hits the matte finish. So let's turn off the tone curve, turn it back on. You can see it dramatically affects the way this thing looks. Now let's just sharpen it just a little bit. This is already a really sharp image. Go ahead and do plus 70 on it because I wanna see what this looks like printed and I'm sure it's gonna look awesome. Now check it out, this is where we started. And bam, this is where we took it, just using tools in Lightroom. I think that's amazing. And at this point, you can absolutely make a preset and use this in an image later on as a foundational piece of your edits in the future. Hey, if you liked this video, you like what we do, it would be awesome if you liked the video. 
And if this is your first time checking out one of the videos and you learned something today, it would be super cool if you subscribe to the channel. Well, I'm James Young with jamesyoungphotography.com, and this is Teach Me How to Lightroom.